This is a wildflower meadow. Only two years old and already providing a vital resource for a variety of wildlife. In a few years this meadow will be fully established and could contain over 150 species of flower and grass and up to 40 insect species per square metre. Wildflower meadows provide multiple benefits, from acting as a natural flood defence by absorbing rainwater, to cleaning our air by absorbing carbon. But perhaps most importantly, they are a primary nectar supply for pollinating insects, such as bees and butterflies. This is the flower effect. This is a six spot burnet moth, a day flying moth who has just finished shedding its final pupae layer. It is now venturing to the top of the wildflower canopy in preparation for its first ever flight. After forgetting to use its wings, it must now scale the flowers once more. The remaining pupae layer has completely fallen off, meaning flight will be much easier this time. A few last minute preparations. A single moment of hesitation, instantly followed by a rush of courage. The burnet moth has still got many challenges to overcome. Within a wildflower meadow, many unique relationships between animal and plant exist. This marsh thistle has spines to prevent animals from eating it. The goldfinch, however, has adapted to overcome this. Their thin toes allow them to perch on the thistle, avoiding the spines, while their long pointy beak grants them access to the seeds. While foraging, they have to be vigilant for any predators who might be watching. To evade predation, goldfinch flock in small groups and feed only on the largest seeds so that they can spend more time on the lookout. After a short visit to the marsh thistle, they will move on to another location. Bird's foot trefoil, more commonly known as eggs and bacon thanks to its yellow and orange hue of the pea-like flower, is just one of many wildflowers that grow here. These are their seed pods. Resembling bird's feet, they are the reason for their name. This flower has many purposes, from providing a source of nectar for a variety of insect species, to being foraged on by livestock. But for one insect, this flower has a life-changing purpose. Six-spot burnet moths are active during the day, being diurnal means they avoid the risks associated with the nocturnal life. However, flying in the day brings its own challenges. Hungry birds are looking for food, and moths are on the menu. But the burnet moth has a defence mechanism thanks to a special relationship with the bird's foot trefoil. The plant contains cyanide, a poisonous chemical which the burnet moth steals. When the caterpillars eat the trefoil leaves, they can absorb the cyanide for their own use. When threatened, the burnet moth can discharge the poison and deter the predators. This is a unique relationship within the animal kingdom, where both species have evolved their cyanide-making ability separately. Surprisingly, this poisonous substance plays another important role. This female is waiting for a male to arrive so that she can mate. She releases a plume of cyanide chemical into the air, which mixes with the chemicals given off by the bird's foot trefoil. Together, a strong signal is communicated over a large distance, attracting the males to her location. Some males will be rejected by the female depending on how strong his chemical smell is. Once she is happy with her male, mating will take place. 
By picking only the males with a strong signal, the female is giving the next generation the best chances of survival, because males transfer their cyanide during mating. Despite the Burnet Moth's seemingly foolproof defence tactics, there are still some creatures who have the ability to catch and eat them. The weaver spider builds its web amongst a knapweed, one of the six spot burnet moth's favourite food plants. By learning the strategic placement of web location, they have become successful hunters of the burnet moth by trapping them in their web. The variation in predator prey relationships within a wildflower meadow means no one species of flower or animal will dominate. But today, 97% of our wildflower meadows have been lost. Farming today has changed drastically since the end of World War II. Traditional farming methods used before the war meant wildflower meadows were a common sight across our countryside. During World War II, 6 million acres of grassland were ploughed to make cereals. Today, there is an even higher demand and so farmers cut their meadows up to four times a year. This causes a drastic reduction in insect species, whilst having a domino effect on animals higher up the food chain, such as one of Britain's most iconic species. Our biggest land predator, the badger. Badgers are common yet elusive, living in small family groups, they are active mostly at night time. During the day they live in underground burrows known as sets, although if resources are scarce they will come out to find more food. Invertebrates make up a large part of the badger's diet, they can eat hundreds of earthworms in a single night. But the drastic reduction in wildflower meadows due to modern agriculture means that not many invertebrates can be found. The question then, is what can be done? In 2013, Chester Zoo turned old agricultural land into a thriving wildflower meadow. But today, one in five of Britain's wildflowers are threatened with extinction. The new nature reserve is already full of important species, including knapweed, yellow rattle and bird's foot trefoil. With the burst of new flowers brings a beginning of new life. A painted lady butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. Every year these butterflies stop here to breed, while on their 7,500 mile migration from tropical Africa to the Arctic Circle. In 2009, 11 million of them were recorded, and similar numbers are expected this year. For these long distant migrants, it is crucial that we look after and restore our wildflower meadows, so that they can continue to use this important breeding location. The painted lady butterfly isn't the only animal who relies on the wildflower meadows to raise the next generation. Others, like these damselflies, soldier beetles, burnet moths and the small skipper butterfly also breed here. These two small skipper butterflies have just finished mating. They will lay their eggs amongst the grasses, close to the leaf's node. Wildflower meadows may seem insignificant to us, but we can now see just how important these historical habitats really are at helping nature flourish.